Everything's been going well today. Uh, it rained last night, so we can't plant. But uh, skid steer seems to work well to get me unstuck. We haven't ran a fork through the oil pan yet, so so far so good. Push! There goes nothing. Maybe you could hang me out over them cattails so I could mow them down too. And we're moving. Well, I got bored today and everything's serviced and ready to go. So rather than getting the lawnmower stuck a hundred times, I hooked onto this new finish mower, well, new to me, finish mower. I went to an auction and bought this. I sold my old one for $750 and I bought this for 800 bush hog. But why I bought, it's actually the same exact size, but it's built a lot beefier and it's a side discharge. My old one was a rear discharge. And I hated it because it would make windrows that you could literally bail behind. It looked like crap. So I bought this one just to mow roadside ditches here along the farm. I bush hogged the rest of them, but the ones by the farm I like to keep mowed down and look nice. So bought that. So we went and mowed about eh, four miles worth of roadside ditches. And uh, that's done now and I feel better about it. So these are the hay tools. Figured I'd show them off while I was back here. Pumping 28 into the trailer right now out of the tank, so about got that tank empty. But bought this hay rake the other day. It's a Rhino 10 wheel rake. Neighbor had it for sale on Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace. So I said I'd take it. I uh, got a pretty good deal on it, I feel like. Um, he did say that sometimes in thick hay you want to fold the tin, make it. It's a 10 wheel rake, but you can flip these up where it's an eight wheel rake instead. And he said, sometimes you'll want to do that and really thick hay because it'll ball up. But... So I've got that rake. I've got a New Holland hay bind to cut hay with. And then I got this Gale baler, which it's not got net wrap or anything. It's just a twine baler, but five by six bale, that 90 horse that I've got at Maxim. That's what I'll pull it with. So getting a couple hay tools. And then uh, this is where I'm gonna put cows back here. There's actually a pond right past those two little shelters. And then down where those trees are, I'm just gonna quit farming that, fence that in, put grass on it, and turn cows out here. So that's the game plan. I'm not gonna get a lot, just 25, 30 head or so, and then bale a little hay here and there and some smaller patches, but I don't know, we'll see should work out so this part should be satisfying to watch that's liquid 28 percent this fighter cost me extra there's a lot of money in this tank and we're about to dump a lot more money in this tank this is excellius max which is just a nitrogen stabilizer basically what it does is well it stabilizes the nitrogen it keeps it the ground keeps it from leaching and becoming volatile going up and out um, basically just keeps the nitrogen where the crop can use it uh, so i use stabilizer and then i also split apply all of my nitrogen uh, i never put it all on at once that way the crop gets to use it that works out good for two reasons one it doesn't waste money this stuff was very very expensive this year so I don't want to waste any. And two, it's better for the environment because you're not putting way too much water or not putting way too much nitrogen into the water, um, which is actually a bad thing. So uh, you're good in moderation, everything in moderation. But here's the fun part. This stuff is dyed really, really blue. So I always enjoy doing this. And then I'm going to stir it up here in a minute. So once I get the pump in here, it will uh, start blending all this in and circulate it. Just get it agitated and mixed up. But stuff blends pretty well. So I always think that's satisfying to do. It looks really, really neat. 
Well, I finally got to spend some time in the Steiger this evening, tonight, this evening, this afternoon, whatever it is. Pulling a 25 foot reel disc. So uh, it doesn't really know it's back there. So I was pulling it like nine and a half mile an hour. But I knocked out 100 acres. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, tonight, whenever. Um, so I am guessing that I won't be planting that. Um, but it's supposed to be in the 80s and the 90s next week with no chance of rain. So I went ahead and at least got another 100 acres or so ready to plant. And uh, then as soon as it dries up a little bit, we'll start working some more ground, give that a day or two, and just plant right into the crust as it kind of dries back up. Because I'm sure with the rain we're supposed to get, and as powdery as that worked up, um, I would say that's going to completely crust over, which I actually like uh, to plant into. You just don't want that after you plant. Um, the good news is all of my soybeans are up and out of the ground right now. Um, at least they will be in the next couple days. Even the very, very last ones I planted, um, the necks are starting to poke through. So that's good. And the ground's still pretty damp, so it's not crusted over or anything. So I'm definitely gonna have a good stand on all of the soybeans I've looked at so far. Um, so really happy with that. And then the corn that I've planted so far, uh, same way, it's germinated, but it's not completely out of the ground yet. But it's supposed to stay uh, wet enough the next four or five days that um, I'm guessing with the heat we're gonna have and the moisture we're supposed to get, that corn's gonna shoot right out of the ground too. So should have pretty good stand on everything as far as I know. And uh, yeah, then as soon as it dries up next week, getting some of that heat and no rain, um, hopefully it's gonna be timed just right where everything's coming up out of the ground and just as soon as it dries up a little bit, uh, we'll be back to planting and be on the last little push for corn. Um, I've got like, I don't know, I think around 300 acres left. So not too terribly much. I mean, I can knock that out really in two days, uh, but a lot of it is on the state ground. So, um, you know, that's going to take a little longer than it otherwise would. But anyhow, pretty productive day. Steiger did all right today. It is still leaking oil, but it is what it is. We just keep adding oil to it. So, uh, I would say that this motor is going to go to the shop, um, this summer and get a rebuild because the guy that I bought it off of said it was rebuilt. And I think it was, according to the last guy that worked on it for me, he thought that it had been rebuilt, but he said it had not been done very well at all. So, I don't know, it's got some blow by and stuff and I just, it's got good tires on it, transmission does really well on it and everything else is good on it, but it's just got some blow by and whatnot. So, these motors are not that expensive to rebuild, so. I think rather than trading it off and making it somebody else's problem, I'll just leave it as my problem. Have an in-frame uh, overhaul done and uh, nut up and just pay for it. And I should have a pretty good tractor after that. But that's part of buying used equipment. And you know, honestly, I sold my last tractor for 60,000 and that's exactly what I bought this one for. So really, if I've got to spend ten fifteen thousand dollars to make this one run in tip-top shape i'm okay with that i mean shit happens it's got dang near brand new tires and lots and lots of weights on it transmission's good cabs in good shape paints in good shape air conditioner works i mean i'd rather spend the ten fifteen thousand dollars and have the motor rebuilt than i would go out and buy a new tractor and essentially with the tires that's on it and an in-frame rebuild um, and the condition that everything else is in on this tractor, I'll essentially have a newer tractor uh, and for a whole lot less money, for 10, 15 grand uh, worth of repairs versus going and trading it and spending 40, 50 and still not knowing if I have a 
good tractor or not. At least with this one, I'll know what I have. So that's the game plan. I'll probably have this rebuilt this summer. Um, there's several good shops around here that work on these mechanical motors. And I've actually got some buddies too that are pretty good at wrenching on things. So I don't know, may even have them do it. So I don't know. Uh, I was looking up rebuild kits though. And even OEM from Cummins, all the parts are like eight grand. Um, so that's really not that bad at all. And that's straight from Cummins. So I don't know. It's not ideal, but I also bought an $8,000 or an 8,000 hour tractor sight unseen. So, I mean, I knew that was a risk I ran, but for what I paid for it, I was all right with it. So it is what it is. It's not the end of the world. It's running, it's doing what it's supposed to right now. But uh, I think the fact that it has blow by is causing it to leak oil and kind of blow these seals out. It's not terrible, terrible blow by, but it could definitely be better. So, um, we're just keeping an eye on it, shutting it off periodically, letting it cool off, checking the oil and adding it as needed. We've got like 150 acres left to work um, with it. And I think we can limp it through um, as long as we just keep an eye on the oil. I don't like running something with blow by, but I mean, if it's getting an end frame, it's getting an end frame. So it is what it is. But anyhow, pulling on the highway here and uh, I'm gonna get off of here. All right, sprayers parked. Leave it in the field, and uh, we're gonna hit wheat tomorrow with some 28 and some ATS. Uh, this trailer is already full of 28, but I pulled like a thousand gallon out of it, and I've got to put some ATS in it. So I'm just gonna pump a couple totes into it in the morning, and then we'll start putting uh, 28 on wheat tomorrow wrap that up it'll be the second shot for the wheat and i'm gonna get off of here because i've got to back this trailer into this road makes a t here and i can't see the road at all so i'm gonna get off of here all right well i made it i got turned around i had to back road makes a t there and i was backing into the t so i could get turned around and not go completely around the block I just couldn't see anything, so I was trying to focus. But I got good at backing van trailers up like this when I worked at UPS. Uh, I used to move like five to ten of them a day. And you do that long enough every single day and pack them like sardines around Christmas time, uh, you get pretty good at it eventually. So. Back in a semi-trailer is one thing I can do fairly well. Back in trailers in general is not too bad. Now wagons, eh, that's iffy, but I can back trailers. But anyhow, can definitely feel that this uh, tender trailer is only half full right now. I can tell it's sloshing around back there. I can feel it with the semi. It's kind of rocking it back and forth, but uh, it pulls really well. Um, and it's like half full right now. It's Split between two tanks, both tanks are, uh, I wanna say 15 or 1600 gallon, I don't remember, but it's uh, a very, very handy trailer to have. I'm really glad that I bought it, so, so far so good on that. All right, well, the semi is back, and uh, I guess it's time to go home now, so. Gonna head home. Well, I gotta lock the shop first, but then we're gonna head home. Got some electric fence wire too for the uh, upcoming cattle, but we gotta put fence up before that. So, gonna lock the door and uh, then we're gonna get out of here. Morning. We're loading up with some 28, then I'm gonna throw a tote and a half of ATS in, and we're gonna go run some streamer nozzles on the wheat today. Uh, second shot of nitrogen for the wheat, which will bring me right up to about 100 pounds of actual in on that wheat, which is good. So that'll put us uh, pretty well good to go other than a fungicide pass on the wheat. That'll be the last time it crossed it with the sprayer other than the fungicide. Um, 
the next step will be combine it, I hope. So we'll see what happens. And now on to the ATS. And this time I even remembered to take the lid off instead of sucking the tote shut, because I've done that before. Not not on purpose, but I've done it before. But uh, sucking it down works good. So I've got two pumps. I got one pump inside the trailer that pumps out. And then I put a second pump here, which I need to tighten a bit in this it's leaking. Yeah. That's the second pump. It's actually off the old tender trailer. And the way it's plumbed, I can also plumb, I can pump out of a tank, like I'm pulling right now out of a tote. And then this is my outlet, and that's going up into the trailer, into my tanks. But if I want to, I can open this up and actually just pump straight out. So basically, if I just wanted to pump from one tank to another, or just agitate a tank or something like that. I could just hook up, basically pull the trailer beside the tank I want to agitate. And do it now. Listening to uh, Brian Brown and Ben, the Iowan Farmer's first podcast. May as well listen to something while we're out here hitting this wheat. Wheat's looking pretty good, all things considered. Um, that got burnt the first pass which was my fault i had um some antifreeze in the tank still didn't know that that would hurt we it will so a little bit of a hiccup there it did not look very good for a while it's still kind of thin in some spots but luckily it didn't hurt too many acres it only got a few of them but still it sucks that it happened but it is what it is. So, anyhow, we're going to hit this wheat, listen to that podcast, and uh, see if we can't beat the rain and not tear anything up today. This wheat's starting to look really, really good. Um, hopefully, after the second shot of nitrogen, it really gets green, gets some height to it. Some of it started to head out, but not really. I mean, it's just starting to poke the heads out. So we'll be back in here before long with fungicide um, when it kind of gets those uh, pollen sacks right underneath the head. Um, that's when you want to hit it with fungicide. So I would say in a week or two, maybe, I don't know. Um, really a lot of that depends on the weather, but um, really looking forward to combining this wheat this year. I don't know if it'll be worth anything or not. It's definitely worth something at the elevator, but I don't know uh, yield wise what it'll be. But hopefully it's decent. So I don't know. We'll see. Fill it up. Should uh, one more tank should finish what we got left? I think. Maybe. Probably. I don't know. Should get it. But I've already sprayed 1,800 acres this year. Almost 1,900 acres. So. Needless to say, this sprayer is going to pay for itself very, very quickly. I'm not resetting that because I want to see how many acres that I spray in here. Um, so, yeah, multiply that by eight, and that's what it would uh, cost me to hire it done. Not to mention I save a ton of money on chemical because I have my own sprayer and I get to buy with who I want to buy with and not tied to the retailer that's spraying it so sprayer definitely pays for itself very very quickly but it is also the most expensive piece of equipment i own so um it's kind of a give and take but as long as i don't have any major catastrophes with it i think it's going to be a really good investment well you can see the storm front moving in and apparently it's pouring at home already so Yep, we're done. So basically, since it rained like two inches, we're just trading $8 corn for $1,000 a ton fertilizer today. The $8 corn part's cool, but the $1,000 a ton fertilizer's not. But at least we're almost done spreading fertilizer. I've got like 100 acres left to spread, and then we're done. So that's good at least. So on this bin, we got tired of waiting on a six inch unload. So we doubled up here. 
this has always been there, so I just figured what the hell, we'll open it and see what happens. But it works really well. We've already got the middle of the bend cord down, so I don't think it's going to buckle it or anything. So that speeds things up here a little bit. So back in the day, Ag Leader, in their infinite wisdom, put a metal ring around the steering wheel of these auto steer systems. And then they put a plastic gear that ran it. Now that's all plastic shavings. And that's the gear completely ate down. So my auto steer has been slipping. So I ordered a new one and this one's metal. So hopefully we don't have that problem again. When I called them about it, they just wanted me to buy an entire new system. I said, I am not going to do that. So here is what I got off of eBay right here, which is the gear that I need that should keep the teeth on it. So it's only going to take about 15 minutes to fix if that, but uh, kind of a piss poor design in my opinion, but apparently somebody else thought so too, because well, they made these gears up, so now I gotta find some hex or star key. Hmm. I have them. I just gotta dig for them. Not in that drawer. I'll find them. There they are. Well, it's Saturday afternoon, and it's been a good day of service and equipment and whatnot, but still a little bit too tacky to do anything in the field. I'll definitely be in the field this week, though. But, uh sharpening mower blades actually replacing mower blades and doing it the easy way this is my favorite jack on the farm that's definitely the most expensive one too but very very handy doesn't get stuck in the gravel trying to push it it's not heavy to uh try and lug around you just jump in and move it so highly recommend getting one of those jacks you don't even have to crank it up at all it's it's pretty nice so now I've got some high lift blades on here and a striping kit so we can have a real gourmet looking yard. So we're gonna go throw some gas in it and see how it mows. Took the door off the skid steer too. I got tired of not being able so, to. So uh, I guess that concludes this video. So thank you for watching and uh, all that good stuff. So yeah, subscribe and all that crap if you haven't already. I'm not going to be that guy. So, thanks for watching. And I got to. The, the, the doors. It's. It needs attention.